What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. Today is a pretty special episode. We'll be taking a look at one of the first models that I ever bought off of eBay more than 20 years ago. Nineteen ninety eight was a pretty amazing year for Warhammer, or at least from what I can personally remember. Second edition forty K was a hit, and third edition was about to come out that October. Lucky for me, I happened to get into playing and painting that year. I also picked up the newest codex for the Eldar army. Um, did you know that that there are new Eldar models coming out? Really? That the they're coming out pretty soon? Really, they are. Yeah. Well, apparently this video is very well timed and there have been some rather large Eldar announcements made for this year. Which is in fact almost the 25th anniversary of that new edition and for the model we'll be looking at today. The Avatar of Kane is an iconic model for the Eldar. And back when I bought this model, I thought it would absolutely carry me to victory no questions asked. He was just too awesome of a model, and it turns out I've never even used him in a game. The thing is, I got hung up on what I wanted this model to look like. He represented the army, and at the time I needed him to be painted to an unreasonably high standard in order to show how super duper good he was at dice rolling. I honestly don't know why I felt like that, especially at the time. I really hadn't painted pretty much anything, so thinking this model would be extraordinary was really kind of a pipe dream. That certainly didn't stop me from trying, of course. I probably painted and repainted this model at least five times, all without stripping the paint too. I had no idea you could even do that back then. That brings us to today. And while I don't generally condone repainting your old models, I think it just happens to be time for me and my friend to try one last time to get what I was after all those years ago. As per usual, we do need to do a bit of research before we get started. So let's take a look at eBay and see how much money my 12 year old self lost buying this model. Heading to eBay, I do a quick search for 40K Eldar Avatar of Kane. Sort the listing by buy it now, used, and lowest price first. All right, so right off the bat, there are a bunch of pretty inexpensive listings for leftover conversion parts. It looks like the old avatar may have lent out a couple of limbs to a lot of conversions over the years. There we go. We finally start getting into completed model auctions. Looks like the lowest price is about $22, which is okay. There really hasn't been a new Avatar of Kane. So you want to know what I paid for this guy in probably 1999, 2000s money? I got into a bidding war over an auction that had no pictures, only a description. It included a grav tank, some fire warriors, and a handful of guardians, and the avatar. Well, I paid $155 for the whole thing, and probably another $20 for shipping, which if you add it up all today, I paid maybe a little bit more than MSRP straight from Games Workshop for a bunch of pre-painted minis. Yeah. You know what though? it was completely worth it. I still have all those models, and now that the announcement for new Eldar models has finally come, or seems to be coming, it looks like this is gonna be a really good year. Since I really have no idea how I want to paint this model, other than some very basic color ideas, pretty much copying what I wanted to do back then, we need to head to a place where we can gather some ideas, or at least see if anything pops out at us that we like. Instagram is a great way to check out other painters and give you a direct line to them if you ever wanna ask questions about a paint job. I really wish I had that when I was 12. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the hashtag avatar of Kane on Instagram, and I'm just gonna start scrolling until things start to pop out, and then we can talk about the things that I like and the things I kinda of wanna go for. This one really pops out to me because it's something kind of similar to what I was trying to go for originally with that red all over look. And I like that their green gemstones kind of pop off of that red and really give a good contrast. And I don't really want to go for something like this, but I do like the way that this looks. Specifically, I really enjoy the fire effect on the sword. I like that dark red to orange to yellow, and there's that, that edge highlighting with the white that really brings it all together. The other thing I really enjoy is how dark the skin or armor is with the kind of molten color coming up in between. Now you see that a lot, but I do like this example in particular. This one right here really pops out to me. 
This has that nice gradient on the, the big horns. It's got the red and the green. It's got the bale tan on the loincloth. And it has that classic green hair. And I'm still going to probably do the white stripe in the hair. I think that's a pretty popular thing, especially back in the old model. But I really like the way that this looks. This is very much how I wanted mine to look. So it'll be different, but I think this is a good jumping off point. And I know at least the colors that I like, the greens and the reds are going to go together with that, you know, nice orange to yellow gradient. So we're going to, we're going to see what happens, but I really like this. First things first, let's throw this old guy into a sonic cleaner filled with concentrated LA's totally awesome and let him run for a while. This will get rid of the old layers of paint and start to break down the old glue on the model. Once he's cooked, I'll take an old toothbrush and scrub off the excess paint. Not all of it's going to come off, but not to worry. You can always put the model in for another longer session or use something a little stronger. For my models, and because I have kids in the house, I prefer not to use anything too caustic. For metal, there are all sorts of paint removers, things like aircraft paint stripper that can make this job even easier. Still, all of the problem paint has been removed. It's time to use a Dremel to lightly buff the surface and make this model look its best before putting down new paint. If anything, this is just for the satisfaction of really getting in there and cleaning the model. Just look how shiny it gets. Next up, I'm going to pin the parts together using a hand drill and paper clips. Line up the parts and mark where the holes go. Drill them out and place the paper clip in between with a little bit of super glue. This will ensure that the metal model is safe to handle without breaking and keep the model from ever falling apart. When I was younger, I applied an aggressive amount of super glue to get this model to stay together. And it's always been something that I've really not liked about it. Now we paint. I'll start with a couple of layers of Stylores Black. This should protect the pewter relatively well from any falls or bumps. Pewter is known to be a bit bendy and paint can crack when touched. For the first color, I want to start by bringing in that deep red into the body. The old paint job I had was almost completely red, and honestly, it's because it was one of the colors I had at the time. In order to build up that fiery look, I'll start to add the orange into the mix. A little bit of red left over to get that stick but orange nonetheless. Then we can finally bring in a little bit of yellow to put on the tips, as well as very lightly glaze over the orange and red to mix the color together and give it a little more saturation. This was definitely something I was missing from the original paint job, or at least one of them. Like I said, I was working with a very limited set of paints, only a handful really. In order to make that fiery color, I figured I would layer gold near red. Kinda seemed to work. Sort of, not really. Next up, let's set up the wet palette so we can switch to a regular paintbrush for a while. Coming in with Secret Weapon Tire Black. Rest in peace, Hero Weapon. I'm going to paint over the edges of anything that's supposed to be gold later on. That way there's a nice dark color for the gold to stand off of and it will give us some free black lining and boost the contrast. I'm also going to glaze this into the body to break up the hot spots because the paint is a little bit on the cool color side and it gives you that look of hot lava in the cracks and the upper crust areas are starting to cool down. It's a nice bit of contrast but it's also pretty subtle. Taking the same red, orange and yellow, I just want to reinforce those hot spots in the armor. I don't want this to be too over the top, not a huge fan of the super bold heat lines, but a little bit of red followed by a little less orange towards the center, and finally some yellow right in the middle and edge highlighted towards the center of any areas 
gives you the idea that he's pretty molten. Next up will be all the gold for all of the ornamentation on the model. And there's actually quite a bit of this stuff on him. There's the pretty obvious headpiece and chest piece, but on the entire body, there are little inlays for jewels that will look great in gold. I did try and take my time with this step so I didn't overspill onto anything that was already almost done, especially the airbrush stuff. That is next to impossible to cover up. Not too long ago, I found a bunch of my old paints, and wouldn't you know, some of them were actually still perfectly fine. This color in particular, Dark Angels Green, is a really nice base coat for green Eldar Guardians, and I painted a ton of them back in the day. So we might as well incorporate the same color back into this model by using it for the loincloth and hair. For the loincloth, I'll base coat it with this green and then start to wet blend some highlights in with some brighter yellow green. I don't really want stark lines in the loincloth where the folds are, but getting some bright color in there will really make it look a lot nicer than just a flat base coat. I also use that lighter green to highlight the belt he has on as well as the straps on his legs. Okay, so now we have our base coats and we're getting closer to being done. The next step is going to be pan aligning this model and trying to separate the parts and pieces from one another. That way we have nice black lines in the recesses and even more definition to the model. For a nice dark line that's really pretty easy to do, I like to use Tamiya pan aligner. It's easy to apply, easy to wipe away if you want to lessen the effect on the model. Very flexible and overall pretty good. And once again, very satisfying to put on. One of the last things to do for this model is the hair. I base coated with that old green that I had, but I wanted to punch up the saturation and contrast a bit more. So I'll use my airbrush for a quick application of bright green right in the front, followed up by a white stripe that I had on the model previously. Using a little bit of that gold mixed in with some bright silver, I highlight all of the metallics. This really makes them shine and they stand off the model really well. One of my original iterations of this model, I tried to freehand a bale tan symbol onto the loincloth. I've done it before on other models with moderate success, but this time I opted for a transfer. After all, this is an ideal spot for one because of how large and flat it is. If this were a Space Marine shoulder pad, I would probably just opt for freehand. To start by using some microsole to soften the transfer, lay that onto the loincloth using some hobby tweezers and a brush, I gently guide the decal onto the cloth. Once I get it into position, I use a little micro set to finish off the decal. If you wanna make a decal look a little bit more freehand, then you can always come back in with some paint and just fill it in. That usually makes the transfer look a little less plasticky and it sits onto the paint job a lot nicer. This pretty much brings my original wants and desires for this model to fruition, even if it only took a couple of decades. I've had this model with me for a very long time, and for a very long time, I didn't think I would actually ever get back into painting or back to this model. I tried so hard to get this model to look just right the first five times I painted it, but the thing is, it was only my first six months of painting when I got this model. It's a little crazy to think that I've had this in the back of my mind for so long that eventually someday I would go back and try again one more time on this guy, and maybe then I could call it good. The point is, it's okay if the end results didn't line up with what you had in your mind. You're still gonna learn something to bring to the next model. And most importantly, you'll have fun with it on the table. When this model goes off, I'm not gonna be thinking of how I could have improved my edge highlighting or airbrush blends. I'm gonna be invested in a game with a friend and how my time painting this model really brought him to life right in front of us. Another very good takeaway is that when you least expect it, a new version of that same model you've got on your shelf, the one that you've had a similar experience with, will get an entire refresh and reprint, and there will be a better opportunity to try again. I wasn't really sure how this ending was gonna go, so I thought I'd just reshoot a quick kind of ad lib version of it. Basically, this model has always been sitting right in front of me. It's been kind of staring at me for a long time. It was part of the reason why I left the hobby long time ago. So it's it's kind of been a weird thing. It's just on my mind for a long time. And it's like, I really want to go back to that model and I want to do something. And of course, right when I decided to do that, you know, I just saw it sitting on the shelf and I'm like, I'm doing it this week. We're going to do it. We're just going to take care of it. The new announcements came out for this new Eldar stuff, which 
<laughs> good timing, bad timing, I'm not sure. Um, I'm really looking forward to that new Avatar of Kane, and I think bringing in Games Workshop's newer aesthetic of, of creating models that are more for painting, I think I'm probably gonna have a pretty good time doing that. So I'm gonna try and find one used, and if not, we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna paint it. We'll do a cool comparison video to this one. So, you know, if you're not subscribed, I highly suggest, and thank you for doing that. So uh, let's get let's get moving. Let's let's see the end of this video. Well, that's gonna do it for this week, hobby friends. Thank you again for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And of course, here is the completed Avatar of Kane.